Hi, I'm John. I want to show you how I built a rocking horse. I first made this horse about 1976 and it's evolved a bit since then but uh, over the years I've made hundreds of these and uh, hope you enjoy making this one yourself. I hope you begin by reading my book online. It's free and has dozens of pictures showing you step by step how to build this horse. The video will also add to that uh, text version and give you even more uh, ideas on how it's done. First you start by laying out the paper pattern and tracing it on your stock. I'm using black cherry today and uh, it's one of my favorite woods to use. While I do sell these plans, you can choose nearly any plan you want and use a lot of the techniques I use and make this horse your own. Uh, my library has dozens of books on building toys and many show how to build a rocking horse and many have plans that you can uh, scale up and use yourself. Um, if you do like my plans you can purchase them from me but uh, that's not really what this is about. I really hope to show you how I build a horse so you can incorporate my ideas and techniques in your own projects. I use a ballpoint pen in all my tracing. You know, almost all my marking on wood is done with a fine point ballpoint. Uh, I find it works very well. After you've drawn a pattern on the wood, you uh, take it over to your bandsaw and start sawing it up. If you expect to make more than one horse, you might trace onto a thin layer of plywood and make uh, rigid patterns for your subsequent efforts. Uh, it's easier than trying to preserve the paper patterns. Once you're done tracing, just take it to your bandsaw and start cutting it out. Today I'm using a quarter inch blade with a skip tooth de uh, design. It uh, cuts aggressively and fairly smoothly and I use them quite often. Sometimes I prefer a hook tooth design when I'm cutting thicker stock or ripping a lot. Uh, to the right of the bandsaw you can see a portion of my router table. It has two routers with uh, roundover cutters. I almost always use those, although sometimes I use others. As... When band sawing, try to keep your motion smooth and even. Uh, fits and starts in your movement and shaky hands will lead to a necessity of a lot more sanding later. So the smoother you can make your cuts, the better. Most of my bench tools are pretty inexpensive and they do a good job. 
but I do buy very good cutting edges. Uh, the difference between a professional bit or blade and an eBay special from China is readily apparent when you use it daily or over a number of years. Whoa, look at that crack. Clearly that piece is a throwaway. Sorry about that. As you can see, I tend to buy lower grade hardwoods. I like number one common usually and often number two. Uh, lower grades have more interesting figure and grain than the more expensive grades, which are designed to be free of defects and interest, <laughs> actually. So uh, I can cut most of my boards into fairly small pieces and work around these defects you see and enjoy the benefits of that beautiful grain. Uh, it's well worth it to me and it saves me money too. You can see a blue plastic insert in my saw. I buy these five at a time from somebody. I can't remember where. Check the internet. Um, they come. They make them for all different size bandsaws. Uh, it's easier on your blade if you mess up and push the blade sideways and, and uh, uh, have the blade actually hit the metal part of the insert. So the plastic is more forgiving and uh, tends to keep my blade sharper longer, particularly when taking 
sharp corners on the bandsaw when the blade is pushed one side or the other more than ordinary. Now it's time to sand off all those bandsaw marks, so I use my 6x48 belt sander. I'm using 100 grit on this sanding belt. I added a eighth inch thick piece of sheet steel under my sanding belt to give me a room for clamping various jigs and fixtures on it to help in sanding. Right now you see a 90 degree uh, fence of sort that I use to make sure that the sanding I'm doing stays at 90 degrees with the piece. Um, one difference in the way I build toys is I sand all of the parts before assembly. I find that sanding the parts individually allows me to use my machines to better effect and uh, makes it much easier. You just have to be a little more careful when you are assembling not to ding up the nicely sanded uh, surfaces. Sanding straight lines is pretty easy, but sanding these curves requires some care. You want to use a steady, even motion with the rotation of the piece in this case, so that uh, it makes a nice, smooth curve rather than uh, hills and valleys that you have to work on later. This uh, concave surface is particularly difficult. You have to try to maintain the 90 degrees, an even motion, and uh, it Basically, it takes a lot of time to learn how to do that. Um, you may end up having to clean up uh, your little hills and valleys with a hand sander when you're done. I use about um, I don't know, 25 to 40 sanding belts per year, so that must mean several thousands over my 45 year career. Um, I buy um, kind of generic uh, belts, but I've learned over the years who makes the best ones and who doesn't. Uh, back in the day, the joints used to fail pretty often, but adhesive got better or something over time. And, I hardly ever have a problem with a joint these days. Uh, and the belts I buy are around 4 or $5 each, and they last a long time. I just use them a lot.
if you feel free to fast forward on some of these sequences of sanding. Uh, it gets pretty repetitive and I'm better at wood than I am in editing so you have to watch some of the boring stuff I guess. Anyway, enjoy. I retired the Rocking Horse from my line of toys about a year ago, so this is probably one of the last ones I'll make. Uh, this is taking place in December of 2019. Um, not sure why I gave it up for sure. Um, probably because of the larger pieces of wood are harder on my body. Um, 45 years of woodworking and uh, genetic propensity for osteoarthritis is ask uh, require me to be a little more gentle on my body so the smaller pieces I make now are, are easier for me uh, primarily my train set which is very popular and my block wagon which which is not very small but um, is such a great toy I continue to make that a lot and there's a few other toys on my website if you're curious you can see my toys at woodentoy.com you can also read my book about how to build this horse which I highly recommend for anyone to read um, just because it has a lot of info and a lot of pictures and a lot of detailed descriptions of the techniques and tools I use. This horse design was chosen in 1976, I believe, for the Fine Woodworking Magazine Biennial Design Book. They don't put many toys in there and I was pleased that they put, chose mine. Uh, if you have one of those or receive at the library, you can look and see how the, how the horse has changed over those 40 years. But um, it's not a lot. It's uh, pretty hard to improve on a good design. Not many people use double stick tape to fasten sandpaper to their chop saw, but it certainly helps hold the work in position while I chop it and saves a lot of time and clamping. This is one of those do as I say not as I do moments. Uh, you really should be clamping this to your work surface uh, when you're drilling these large diameter holes. Uh, I have seldom do that and uh, I've nicked myself a couple times over the years, but um, I encourage you to do it because um, they create quite a bit of twisting force on the material and uh, if you're not careful you can hurt yourself. I didn't have a drum sander like this one for the first 30 years of my career and uh, did a lot of sanding on the 6x48 belt. Uh, this is a wonderful tool. Uh, it's amazing how well it can surface stock, particularly stock with contrary grain which you can't really plane very well. So uh, if you can afford $800 or whatever I paid for this, I highly recommend it. It's a great tool.
This is the router table I spoke about earlier. You can see the two routers, or the bits of two routers. Uh, I usually keep two different bits and um, going at one time to save time on changing. Uh, these are both roundover bits with ball bearing pilots. But I also use a fence when I'm doing long straight pieces because you can see the fence is very close to the cutting edge and that really helps prevent tear out when you're machining it quickly like I'm doing here. The two times I've hurt myself in my career have been on this tool. Uh, routers uh, generate a lot of thrust on your piece of wood. and If you're not careful, it can kick away. And if your fingers are near the blade, your fingers can end up in there, which is what happened to me. Um, I've since learned to use jigs in ways and holding devices in ways to prevent that, so that doesn't happen any, anymore. But I still recommend you read your instruction manual carefully and pay attention to the manufacturer's directions because some of the shortcuts I've learned and adopted over the years are not always the safest and uh, I would feel pretty badly if you hurt yourself uh, on one of these tools. I have two belt sanders. I uh, usually keep a 100 grit on one and 150 grit on the other, although that changes occasionally. This uh, right now is 150 grit I'm using, uh, putting the final edges on those routed surfaces on the edges of the board. Drilling this hole in the end grain of the board is, is 
it's fairly delicate work. If you feed too hard, uh, you will split the wood. So take it easy, be gentle. I spend an amazing amount of time at this tool. It's an inflatable drum sander. You inflate it with five or six or ten pounds of pressure and the sanding drum contours to the curves of the piece making a very effective sanding job. I start with a 150, ended up with a 320 on this usually and it makes a very silky finish on a wood like cherry. Closely, you can see a bottle of um, baby powder attached to the machine. That's to go between the sanding belt and the rubber drum. It uh, lubricates just enough to prevent the uh, rubber from wearing prematurely. Some sleeves come with a, or some of the drums come with a fabric uh, uh, liner between the paper and the drum. And I always wore those out very quickly, so I've just gone to talcum powder, and it works fine. Like any sanding, you know, the, the smoother your motion is, the better the sanding job is. If you, if you do flits and starts or are jerky in your movements, the, uh, the sanding belt will dig in little hills and valleys that are tough to get off. So take your time, try to keep your motion smooth and even, and you'll end up, you'll end up with a, a piece of wood the same. This is a somewhat tricky part that's explained well in the book. Um, I'm spacing up the cross pieces three-eighths of an inch to just get beyond the round over portion on the rockers. So I'm going to glue the rockers onto these cross pieces so that uh, the knife edge of those uh, cross pieces meets on the flat surface of the rockers. I'm using the paper pattern here to position the cross pieces along the rockers so that the horse rocks nicely. Try. Please be sparing in your glue use here. If you use too much, it squeezes it out and is a real mess to clean up later. We're really going to rely on the wooden dowels later for strength. These the glue joints are just to hold the pieces in position so we can bore the holes and insert the dowels. These pipe clamps have been with me for 45 years. Uh, 
there for the ladder. Uh, not the cheapest, but a fairly inexpensive tool from uh, Sears Roebuck and back in the day when cast iron was good and most tools were in good condition. These uh, lasted over the decades and probably will long last me. If you're if you look closely you can see I'm using little leather pads under the clamps, jaws. It's just a way to ensure no marks on the cherry, which is on the softer end of the hardwoods. And I want to keep it as dent free as possible. You can get a sense of how small my shop is by looking in the background. There's a sander, a dust collector, chop saw, and a drum sander all in this little space. Um, Thankfully, I'm not making large boats, I'm making small toys. Oh, my website. Should I stop? This is one of the trickiest joints on a horse. Um, it's a hand band sawn joint that has to be a fairly tight fit for the, to the horse's head. You're basically sawing a mortise for the, the head to fit into. You want it to be snug, so when you're sawing this out, uh, sand on the inside of the line and uh, go back and sand or saw a bit again and again until you get a nice snug fit. If you cut too much at once it's pretty irretrievable so be conservative and uh, just plan on uh, going over it again like I'm going to do here. Uh, taking a little bit more off each time until I get a fit that I like. I'm using one of my rolling benches. Uh, it's a handy thing to have in a small shop. I have two of them uh, at slightly different heights for um, various assembly jobs. And um, this one has a quarry on top, the other one is wood. Uh, the quarry on it um, is nice and flat, which helps on some assembly. The walnut dowel I'm using here is a bit oversized for the three quarter inch hole. So I spend a lot of time sanding it down a bit at a time to get the diameter uh, small enough to make a nice snug fit. Uh, you don't want this to be loose, but again, you don't want it to be too tight either. So it's a constant uh, trial and error, trial and fit until you get it to be nice and snug. After a couple hours, the glue set up enough that I can bore the holes for the rocker assembly. I start out with one hole in each corner and drive in the dowels, then I'll add two additional dowels, making a, a very strong joint with the uh, maple dowels I'm using.
the dowels I purchased for this project were a little undersized, so I'm using a, a bit um, called a letter size U bit. Excuse me, that was a letter size U bit. Um, it's a little under three eighths of an inch, which corresponds well with the diameter of the dowels I'm using to make a nice snug fit. I often use uh, the larger sizes of V and W, which are a bit over 3 8 Again, the dowels come in different diameters each time you buy them, and you have to experiment to find out what works well. drill these three holes intentionally, not in a line, because uh, getting them in a perfect line is difficult when you're free doing, free wheeling like I'm doing here. But if I stagger them a bit, uh, it looks nice and no one knows that I did it in a hurry. see some plastic bins in the background. Those hold parts for the train cars. My wooden train has 24 cars all together and I mass produce parts um, all at one time and then build the cars five at a time. These protruding dowels are taken care of on the belt sander. It's pretty easy. I'm laying out the position for the legs, uh, finding the center of each cross piece. Uh, typically it's 5 inches, 10 inches overall. Then I'm using the horse's body as a uh, help in uh, aligning the legs when I glue them on. Again here you want to use a minimal amount of glue. We're only keeping the legs on while we bore the holes. This isn't for strength. The dowels will provide the strength. I've forgotten I need a, a can or something on the other end to lift it up to so the legs are resting straight up and down rather than at this angle. My assistant is handing me the can right now. Seems to be about uh, 90 seconds or 120 seconds. Then I can switch and use it to the other end. After this glue sets up for an hour or two, depending on the temperature of your shop, um, you can uh, turn it over and bore the holes for the uh, dowels. If you can let it rest overnight, that's even better. Cherry has a little bit of a sugar content, which I think is responsible for that loud squeak you hear. Uh, it 
it's annoying, but uh, cherries are very clean, boring wood, so it's not so bad. In the early days, I sold my toys at art fairs throughout the upper Midwest. Um, in the 90s, when the internet came on, I jumped on early and uh, always was number one on Google because there were so few toy makers on the web. Uh, nowadays, there's hundreds if not thousands of woodworkers or toy makers on the web, so my rankings have gone down over the years. But um, I keep pretty busy, so I have had little interest in um, SEO and uh, tweaking the site to respond to mobile platforms and all that kind of thing. Actually the majority of my toy sales these days are to repeat customers. I'm on the second generation in dozens of families and even the third generation in a few. Uh, my customers tend to be loyal and come back again and again. It's a good feeling and a good relationship. If you look closely here, you can see I pick up the assembly and hold it by the leg. It minimizes the sharp shock of the hammer blows and prevents the legs from popping off. On the second dowel hole, you can see I've let the assembly fall off one end of the uh, U-shaped block to allow these holes to go in at a slight angle. It makes kind of an interlocking joint with the two dowels at different angles. I think it makes it stronger over time. You can see the layout of the pins, or the dowels, on the plans, and that shows you the, the two angles I use. It's not exact. I've posted a video tour of my workshop online uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to look at that, uh, feel free. If you have a sharp eye, you can see that the cross pieces don't meet uh, perfectly on that end where I'm working now. Uh, these pieces are a little thicker than I usually use, so they overlap. Uh, I'm not sure if it shows in the video, but I will take my sh narrow, sh my shallow sweep gouge and uh, pair that off so it makes a pleasing meet rather than that uh, sharp edge showing. This is that shallow sweep gouge I'm using to pair off the dowels. I go about three quarters of the way from one direction, then rotate and hit the other quarter from the opposite side. Makes a nice clean cut. And sometimes a drill press serves as a workbench. These dowel ends could be sanded off um, with a random or but a hand sander, or, or just elbow grease and a regular hand sander, if you don't want to use the gouge. You want to make sure these three dowel holes I'm boring now hit in the center of the body. Uh, I can do it by eye, but you may want to mark it out with a pencil from measuring from the side. The four holes coming in from the side to secure the head are staggered so that none of them meet. Uh, that layout is also on the plan if you want to see. Most of my dowel holes are drilled or bored with regular twist bits, uh, as in the letter size I described earlier. Um, I do regrind the tips, and you can see how I do that in another YouTube video on my channel. The 
black I'm using is just a jig I made since I make so many of these horses. Uh, it helps to make it, but it's not absolutely necessary for a one-off horse. After glue dries for about a half hour or even an hour, I pare off any squeeze out from the joints. Uh, if you do it when it glue is really fresh, it just smears more than comes off, so it's more difficult. So if you let it dry or harden up a little bit, it's much easier. Just don't let it go overnight or it's even harder yet. I don't use any measurements in placing a footrest. I just hold it in a place that looks good and bore the first hole, pin that, and then do the second one and pin that. Speaking of glue, I use uh, alphatic resin glue, either Elmer's Carpenter's wood glue or a glue by Tight Bond. Uh, Tight Bond lately seems to be the more readily available locally. They're both great glues, much stronger than wood, uh, very forgiving of gaps. My magic assistant is tossing me in an extra dial here. He's also running the camera. Really uh, quite a talented young man. sanding block under there to steady the rocker assembly while I drill the hole. You saw me move it from one side to the other. I like to use an excess of glue in my doweling, um, but I always leave a little space at the bottom so that the hydraulic pressure doesn't split the wood when the dowel bottoms out against the glue in a full clamping this assembly is kind of tricky uh, I use a, a more complicated jig to do this it's much easier but uh, I didn't think you'd want to make that so these four and a quarter blocks hold the body in the right position while you put the clamps on and then bore the holes Probably would have been easier to not install the footrest until after these legs are secured to the body. Um, but uh, I did not think of that. You can bore these holes on a drill press like I'm doing, again making sure the four dowels don't meet in the center of the horse. Or a hand drill may be easier for those of you who have, to have a steady hand and a nice drill bit. Looks like I ding, dinged my finger in this project. I don't remember what how I did it, but uh, there's a little uh, wound on the side of my small finger there. It's kind of the cost of making things of wood. You can see I have a second wooden handle on my drill press. Um, after 45 years of woodworking, my right arm has developed quite a bit of pain with osteoarthritis, so when I can, I use my left hand.
you can certainly saw off the dowel ends if they stick out a bit too far. Um, I usually don't have to do that, but sometimes uh, I quit hammering before the dowel's all the way in and have to do it this way. a rubber mat under the horse when I'm trying to protect these sanded finishes. A piece of carpet will do the same and is worthwhile. There's a little bit of glue on the leg. In my first years of woodworking I used wooden mallets created by me. They were quite beautiful. They tended to wear out and uh, I went with the steel hammer which uh, does a great job for this kind of work. The steel was hard on my gouges, the wooden handles anyway, so you can see the copper wire wrap around the top when it started to mushroom a bit. I um, haven't had any problems in the last 20 years though. Here I'm using a dead blow hammer to push the handle into the hole. It's a snug fit. Uh, I also use it as a measuring device going back and forth and making sure the dowel is centered on the horse's head. And to secure that handle I drill a quarter inch hole and insert a dowel on the throat of the horse through the walnut dowel. On the far right of this frame you can see an uh, air gauge and a blue air cylinder and a little silver thing. The silver thing holds the steel type uh, showing my name. The air cylinder provides about 1500 pounds of pressure pushing the type into the wood embossing my name and the year I make the toy into the wood. That's a 220 grit sandpaper I'm using there to polish off that pin, that dowel end. Now I'm going over the horse. It's been quite a bit of time with 220 grit here, uh, going over all of the surfaces on the horse to uh, remove any kind of uh, stray tool marks or just rough sections that didn't get done on the machines. Uh, the care you take at this step really makes a difference in uh, the look and feel of the horse in the end. So I encourage you to take your time here. And when you're done sanding, you can do the really fun part, put on the oil finish I use. I use food grade walnut oil. I buy it at the grocery store or from a supplier to grocery stores. It's uh, edible. It's a traditional wood finish. Uh, it's a drying oil. And uh, after three or four days, it's ready to ride. You can see I put a piece of cardboard under the horse at this stage to keep the oil off my bench.
After a few minutes I take some paper towels and wipe off the excess oil and take the paper towels outside in the garbage can right away rather than let them spontaneously combust in my shop. And the last step is to install the jute tail. I fold a, usually about six wraps and slide it in there with a lot of glue in the hole and then secure it with a pin. Uh, a narrow pin though, I don't want to put any outward thrust on that hole. It could split out the sides of the body. Here I trim the tail length and untwist a bit of each uh, strand and then uh, flip it with my hand a few times to give it a bushy appearance. And there is a complete cherry horse uh, ready to ride if a little moist. Um, Again, uh, I hope you make courses for your children or grandchildren. I mean, they're a very satisfying project, and they'll be a memory of you for generations. Um, if you do choose to make my horse, uh, you're welcome to buy the plans from me. They're $12. Um, but please read the book. It's free, and it tells you everything I did in much more detail than this video.